Hi guys, Steve here from Steve Ailey Survival. I'm going to spend the next few videos, like a mini series, talking to you about uh, the EDC or Everyday Carry Survival Kit. Now, this is a massively subjective topic. You could ask five different instructors and get seven different answers at least. So, to that end, it's going to be my take on uh, an Everyday Carry Survival Kit, uh, the container that you put it in, uh, all the different items that make it up. And, and how to use those items. Um, now this is going to be massively dependent on uh, the extent of your knowledge and how you're going to use your kit, where you're going to be operating, um, what kit's available to you, all different things to take into account. So let's have a look at what will go into a tin um, uh, and why it goes in there. The EDC survival kit. The guideline that I try to stick to is that each item in there should have more than one use. That said, something like a button compass, yes, you could probably use it on the inside of a piece of fabric to make a tie off point, um, but it's a generally one use item. First thing we're going to look at when we're actually considering our survival kit is the container that it comes in. Now, again, it's going to contain your survival kit, but it needs to do more than that. I split them down into three different types. We've got plastic, we've got fabric, and we've got metal. Each one has their own pros and cons. Plastic. Clearly plastic's waterproof. Tupperware. It's got a seal around the inside. So when the lid's on, that is going to be waterproof, watertight. It's going to keep your kit dry. Now push come to shove, you could boil water inside a plastic container. I wouldn't do it every day. There are studies that suggest that plastic, when heated, will leach chemicals into the water. But you know, in a survival situation, I'd probably risk it many different sizes could probably fit that one in a pocket and not notice it too much maybe that one for a day sack or something like that something like that maybe for a vehicle um, and you can even get real tiny ones this one is specifically designed for a survival kit it's got a ferro rod built into the bottom there it's got a mirror built into the lid. It's got a rubber seal around the outside of the lid there so that when it's closed it's watertight. You could easily get quite a few matches in there, some cotton wool, some pins, whatever. We'll come on to the different items that go into a survival kit later on. But that in a pocket you won't even realise it's there and when that lid's closed you could wash that, no dramas, and uh, it's going to survive. On to fabric fairly certain you can't boil water in, in a fabric nylon bag. Maybe if it was really tightly woven nylon, but I doubt it. Or it's polyester. So good things about this though, it's got lots of little pouches on the inside so you can put lots of different items in there. Um, little elastic loops there that you can slot things into. Here you've got a, a tie-off point you can tie a knife to or you could use that to secure it to yourself so you're not going to use it, lose it, should I say. It conforms, it'll stuff into a pouch or a bag or a pocket and uh, you're going you're gonna to fit it in there. Something like this probably won't squash down into a pocket. Different types, like webbing pouch types as well. Again with smaller pouches and Elastic loops on the inside, handy bits of kit, molly on the outside there so you can attach other things to it too. Onwards from that we've got metal tins, if you're tactical that might be a, a bad thing, but if you're in a survival situation, banging that together is going to make a considerable amount of noise and hopefully get you rescued. Now clearly a metal tin you can boil water in. You could use that as a small frying area 
for bugs, etc. Mm. Uh, these tobacco style tins come with a bit of a seal on the inside there, a little bit of a silicon seal, which is going to help to keep your kit waterproof. Push to fit though, that's going to need tape so that, so that that keeps it shut. Same with the smaller type. Again, got a bit of a seal on the inside there. Ideal. Slightly bigger ones. This one's got a hinged lid on it, so you won't lose the lid. Beauty of metal lids as well. You could polish that up and make a bit of a signal mirror. If you don't want to have that pressure on you to create a signal mirror, you could quite easily, as I've done here, stick a mirror to the inside. And now you can see that can be used to signal for attention if the worst were to happen. Just like the others, this one's got a rubber seal or silicon seal on the inside of there. But a little extra feature on this one are these little clasps which force that lid down and ensure that that seal is maintained a good option going up from that we've got cooking pots with a sealable lid you could put some rubber on the inside of there and that will when that's closed properly that's going to force that down and, and create a seal you can see this one has got nothing attached to it but you can still use that to attract attention should you need to. So for me, and the option that I'm going to progress with throughout these videos is the metal tin and this one in particular with the clasps to keep the lid closed. Now in the coming videos we're going to look at the, the contents of that tin and how to use those contents and why I carry those particular items. So stay tuned, um, stay safe, stay alive and I'll see you next time.